Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, this is a new week and I know God has something in store for you. He's got great plans for you. Remember what he said in Jeremiah? He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. Now, with that in our hearts, can we call for that daily bread today? Are you ready? Declare this word with me. Say, Father, today... I demand and I release, I receive my daily bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. And Father, we thank you. Today, Lord, the heavens are opened over us. And every thought of your heart comes to us freely. And as we enjoy your presence, as we enjoy your truth, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Now, listen, I'm going to be sharing with you today, or starting from today, on how to walk in the light. How to walk in the light. Praise God. Now, this is very important. I told you this is 2022, and you've got to reason differently. You've got to walk differently. Jesus told us that the light of the body is the eye. Now, you can read all the scriptures, but then if you don't know how to walk in these things, it will make no sense to you. The result of your reading of the scriptures will mean nothing. You know, you don't want to be that type of person that, you know, I serve God. I've done for many years. I've done everything, but I've got nothing to show for it. That's a sad place to be. Because the Bible says, God has not called us to serve him in vain. See, we don't serve him in vain. Paul preaching, he says that you may know what is the hope of your calling. Meaning there is such a thing as the hope of your calling. So if God calls you to serve him, if God calls you to do anything, there is, there is something that should be at the back of your mind. That Look, I'm going to do this thing because I know the one I'm doing this thing for. He's going to do something good for me, praise God. But if you don't know, if you don't know, then you will suffer, do the work that he wants you to do, and then there is no benefit that you experience in your life. And then, at the end of the day, you become an object of mockery. People mock your Christianity. People don't want to be like you. You don't want to be that kind of a person. It's not a good place to be. That is not God's intention either, praise God. It's never been. It will never be. It's not God's intention that you serve him and you have nothing to show for it. No, 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 no. He's a big God. You, you just think about that uncle of yours or that relative of yours who, who, who's, who's doing well. He's got money. And then he calls you, oh, come, come, come do something for me. You know, growing up as children. Think about it. Remember, you want to go because you know what? He's going to tell you to keep the change. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? He said, oh, come, please go buy this thing for me. It's okay. You take the money, you go buy, and then you're praying, ah, this thing should be cheaper than what they've given me, you know? And then you get, and you know, not because you want to hide the change, you know? You know this is his nature. When you go and say, oh, there is a change of this amount, say, oh, don't worry, keep it. Just, just keep it. That's the excitement, <laughs> praise God, for, for a lot of us, praise God. Now, now think about God. He's not called you to serve him in vain. Not in vain. So when I serve God, I do it with my whole heart, knowing that he's got my back. He's got my back. I don't believe I should serve God and then my family suffer for it. I don't believe I should serve God and, 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 and my finances suffer for it. I don't believe I should say, I don't want to be, I don't want to steal, for example, because God doesn't want me to steal. Now, that's service, you know that, right? Because service, the first point of service is keeping his word. So, I say, I don't want to steal because God doesn't want me to steal. So, if I don't want to steal, and, and, and should I be broke? No! If I'm refusing to steal because God doesn't want me to steal, then there should be something that gives me joy. And, 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 and I shouldn't be given the reason for my insufficiency 
because I don't want to steal, because I want to serve God. I hope you understand what I'm saying. No, that's not what he's called us to do. When we serve him, we serve him because there is a way. I told you last week about Daniel. Daniel, if he was ignorant, he would have said, look guys, I don't want to eat the king's portion. I would rather starve than eat the king's portion. But that was not Daniel's case. Daniel said, look, I don't want to eat the king's portion. Instead of eating the king's portion, can I please have these? He knew what he wanted. So when we don't do wrong, it's because we know the right thing to do. And, and we know it because the wisdom of God has been given to us concerning it. Praise God. Now let me share something with you from 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. Oh, it's going to be a great week. I know, I know. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. Now watch this. It says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light. Now, now you see, you, you read the, if we walk in the light. But do you know what? The strongest part of this statement is what he said next. As he is in the light. So he's telling you, you don't form your own light. See? You don't form your own light. Because the Bible says there are people who go about establishing their own righteousness. Paul said, I don't want to do that. He said, I don't want to be found having my own righteousness. But I want to find the righteousness which is of faith. Now, when he says the righteousness which is of faith, he is telling you the righteousness that God himself has established. That's why I called it of faith, because it will be revealed to you. Now, when it is revealed to you, you accept it and walk in it. That is why it is called righteousness by faith. We don't assume we will please God. We know what he wants and we do it. When we do what we know he wants, then we know he is pleased. So now he says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light... So what does that mean? I've got to find out how he is operating in his light. When I find that out, I align myself to begin to walk in it with him. Now watch, watch what he says next. He says, we have fellowship one with another. Meaning, if I say I'm walking in the light, but not the same light as he is, we don't have fellowship. We don't have fellowship. And this is where lots of believers, you know, when I mean believers now, I'm, I'm talking about church people. This is where lots of church people operate from. They, they do something and they feel, well, I've tried now, by at least, by, by God should have seen my effort. So, hey, it's not about seeing your effort. It's about you finding out what he wants, finding out where he is, and getting yourself in that place. See that now? So he says, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And guess what it says there? And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all, not some now, all sin. Praise God. Now, it doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. What he's saying here that if you choose today to begin to operate in the light with God, not operating in your own light of assumption, but you take the time to find out where is God walking now? What is God thinking now? So you find Jesus make a statement like this. I do only what I see my father do. What's Jesus saying to us? I walk in the light as my father is in the light. Hmm. So if... If the father says, today, this is what I'm doing. Jesus says, yes, this is what I'm doing. See? He aligns himself with the father. So how then do we, do we know what the father's light is? How then do we know what the light of Jesus is? How do we know? We know it by inclining our ears. Now let me show you something. We, we, we touched the scripture last week. And I want us to go back to it now. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. 
Now, he says, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. Now, we have received. He didn't say we shall receive. He says we have received. Not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, or the spirit who is, who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us of God. Now listen, God hasn't called us to live a life of, you know, some spooky reasoning. Listen to me. Everything God does in your life, is such that it will affect your physical living. You know, sometimes we want to just think and say, look, we don't, we don't, we don't belong to this world. You know, we, we, we don't belong here. We belong outside this world. Now, listen. Listen. We know the world is evil, but understand this. Whatever God is doing in your life, whatever operation of the Spirit in your life, is so that you will function ultimately and, and ultimately in this world. Are you getting me? He's not doing those things so that you will be taken out of this world. No, 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 no. It's so that you will function in this world, but with a different mindset and with a different kind of life. So listen. If your fellowship with God does not produce results in your day-to-day -day living, then something is wrong. If your prayer does not produce physical things in your life, now what do I mean physical things in your life? If your prayer doesn't enhance your relationship with people, if your prayer doesn't, you, 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 you're the one that prays the loudest, you're the one that prays the most, but then nobody can do anything with you. Nobody can trust you to keep to time. Nobody can trust you to keep your words. Then your prayer is meaningless. See, now, now that's what's going on. You are establishing your own kind of light. Not walking in the light as he is in the light. Now, I'm going to be talking to you this week about who we're going to get so practical in these things. Because, listen, the Spirit of God wants you to live well he doesn't just want you to live right he wants you to live well jesus said i am calm that they might have life and have it in abundance he is not just saying you know they will be so deep into spirituality that they will not die again it's far exceeding that thought when he says that they might have life and they might have it in abundance. It means to the full till it overflows. That's what the Amplified Version says. To the full, have life to the full till it overflows. Now he is talking about having not just a different kind of life, but an enviable kind of life. And listen, realize this and realize it on time. The work we have been called to walk with God is a work he does in us eternally. Now we showcase his work in us internally on the outside. It is our responsibility to showcase whatever God is doing in us on the outside. Thank you Lord Jesus. Praise God. Our time is up already today. Now listen. Don't miss any of this broadcast today because we're going to be looking at a lot of things and different angles and, and seeing how you can choose and begin to walk in the light. Have the best day ever today. God bless you. Bye-bye.